Welcome to the game of Risk, everyone. I'm your host, Olive XC, a top player at this game. And today, we're doing Tutor Tuesday, where I review a subscriber game and help them and you, the viewer, get better at the game of Risk. Today's game comes from Smash Gaming, a master rank Risk player doing a novice to grandmaster rank series. You can see him uh, right here. I'll link the video of his on his YouTube channel if you want to go check it out after this game. He is the blue player in this game. And when I look at his position, he, I, well, he has a lot of troops in Australia. You can't go for that, right? Because I think green is going for that. Alliances are on, so I would probably try to ally with the green player right away. The majority of their troops are located in the Africa region. So I think it's going to be very important to try to ally with the red player. And you do like a nice move here, right? Where you move your troops out of the way. Ideally, if the red player understands like a good neighbor theory, they'll attack outwards and then fortify their troops into Brazil and things will be absolutely amazing for you. You do risk it by doing that, that the green player potentially decides like to hit that to get Australia on turn one, but thankfully they didn't. They instead did something much worse where they move their troops out of Europe. The orange player was not going to be getting that turn one. And if the red player wanted to fortify their troops, like they'll just smack the three. A lot of newer players just don't care about the risk reward profile and just attack a lot. Take a look at this black player right here. The black player is just attacking haphazardly all over the map, just attacking so many times. And this is just really bad, you guys. You only should be attacking once per turn in the early stages to avo avoid the risk of like losing your troops. Yeah, Black's on like 22, but people are just going to be attacking like their territories. They have no coherent strategy right now, which is going to be putting them in a really bad spot. They just kind of consolidated their troops. They may have had a, a move either for like, like a North America or a Europe, depending on how players attacked. And, and now look at Red. The Red player gets... Jeez, some crazy good dice right here. And they have an amazing two-point hold over South America. We can see, though, that you are blue player, even though you're allied with red. I'm glad you got the alliance in. You don't have the continent. I don't think this is bad of the red player, though. I mean, you're not going to be getting Africa in one turn, right? And if you were getting Africa in the next turn, you wouldn't have enough troops to defend yourself. There's a three right here. There is a three right here. I think what the black player or red player doing here is a great move. If they really wanted to make a good relation with you, they can just attack in Central America, and then move their six back into Brazil, and everything's great. You won't be upset with them. They won't be upset with you. You're just defending your borders, and you can have a mutually beneficial relationship where you guys both own continents. Ideally, if this was the perfect game right here, I would see the orange player uh, getting the Europe region. The, the green player has now established their Australia region. You um, will be getting the Africa region. The yellow player will eventually get the North America. And the black player just has no idea what they're doing, gets knocked out. But I told you guys in the title, when your neighbor goes bad neighbor we're seeing that right here and this is why this is an excellent tutor tuesday video we are seeing that the red player chooses not to move and you see this sometimes with like newer ranked players where they just don't understand like diplomacy and they just want to do their own thing we also see this with players that are being more potentially uh, antagonistic now you weren't getting the continent anyway right now smash so i wouldn't necessarily be trying like to force it and generally you should be getting your continent once you have additional troops generally when you get like your first trade in because of what can happen right now is that red can feel threatened that you may want to hit them in south america and if they have a set on three and they put it all right here it's a 24 b11 they could immediately just smack you eliminate majority of your troops and then the orange player places three troops here it's your two and then their 13 goes out eliminates you 
it could honestly happen. And since Red has, has such a huge troop lead right now, 24 troops, can, which is a lot, again, especially because I have a continent, you really have to be careful when being like a little more like antagonistic. You really want to kind of bare your teeth and your fangs towards your bad neighbor when you can really back up your potential claim. Because the red player does have a set and they really wanted to. They could have just smacked your 11, ending your whole game right here. Would not have made a good episode of Tutor Tuesday, but it's important to be aware of when to be antagonistic towards another player versus when not to be. The orange player now also trades in and they are very close to getting their continent. Are they gonna take Europe this turn? And it looks like the answer is no. I can understand that because I don't. you don't know how the red player who's already doing something that's not standard is kind of like a acting right there. So I'm fine with their move because I think if I was orange, I would kind of bide my time and wait to see how they attack. You do a nice thing, by the way, moving out of the green player's way. I was listening to your commentary during the game. You were hoping that green wouldn't smack, like you move out of the way and fortified out the troops, establishing good relations with the green player. And now when it's finally time for you to move, like you are doing so. I do dislike how green is not moving with their main stack over to Australia. Because they really just need to be defending it, because some player can just like a black had a set again they don't really know what they're doing but if they did know they could have easily had just put all their troops together went into australia taken it and potentially ruined both players games because surely the yellow player can't get north america red is being very antagonistic both to you the, our protagonist and to yellow who wants their own continent Normally, you only want to be making an, an enemy of one player, but Red is just the worst neighbor in the world. They want everything, and they want it greedily, and they're going to attack anyone who doesn't give them their way. They're like the, the, they're like the crying uh, neighbor who <laughs> is, uh, basically um, gets a temper tantrum if things don't go their way. They're keeping it up, and they're just making such huge tension right here. I would almost consider because this entire game, you only wanted to get Africa. And uh, when I did my um, collaboration with Legendary Tactics, he talks about the, the idea of a continental drift, which is the concept of basically if you can't get a continent, go somewhere else. Instead of you going for Africa, basically going after the crazy red player, one thing you may have wanted to consider was going for Australia and taking that away. If you had just taken that continent, while you would lose the alliance with the green player, what, what would green do? Like green would have to have one, have a set. Two, they would need to hit the black two, then hit the six of yellow, then hit the three of black, or better yet, just hit the one of yellow, then the two of you, to then go in then and hit you. And then you would both just destroy each other ending the game. It's definitely a possibility, but this is also assuming that that the green player has like the big set. I think going for Australia would have been a better play because now what you're doing is you're bringing your troops right next to red. I really would have done this if you choose to truly like um, go to death over the all the Africa continent. I only would have placed my troops next to red once I had that. It looks like, by the way, that the green player may be botting out right now because again like they traded in but weren't really doing too much they may have just gotten busy so again hindsight's 2020 you never could have really predicted this stuff and like and what may have happened but i really would have considered if someone's like not giving you your continent go for another like weaker one before the board gets established because when when you have your bad neighbor you can either go to war with the bad neighbor and destroy each other's games or you can just get a new neighbor <laughs> Here's the thing though, for someone who's like very, very antagonistic, if Red were to have left their troops there and just say they made this like a 30 right here, like well, what would you have done? Would you really have just gone in and attacked a 30, just ending your game and getting sixth place? You're doing a novice to Grandmaster series. I think your biggest mistake like, like uh, this game up until this point was only harping on your one continent because even if you end up getting it for yourself, there is 
no guarantee that your bad neighbor will let you keep it. You do though, once you, once you can get the content, you do get it right away. But look at your game right now. Uh, you have so much less troops. Like Red getting their content right away, just been able to bully everyone into a lead. Orange has a huge continent, they're like super far ahead. Black has no idea what they're doing, but really I, I just count them as like the world's weirdest bot. <laughs> they, they, when you just attack that pass really without a strategy, you're not gonna last far in the game. And yellow, they unfortunately when they should have potentially had like the North America. The red player, I think, is making the right move, being aggressive antagonistic towards yellow because letting both you and Yellow get strong and just trapping them in South America would have been a bad play. They were just pressing their short-term their short -term advantage. And I think if they just only had gone after Yellow, you could have easily gone into a situation, potentially, if this was a pure theory-type game, where the red player would um, knock out Yellow, Orange would probably knock out Black, then they would probably transition, Red would transition to North America, you would transition into South America, and then you guys would all then work together eliminating the green player. Green gave up though. So, and then again, just because people know, like, don't build people don't spend 15 hours in the game learning a the theory of the game, right? So it's gonna keep attacking, like doing whatever the heck is going on. You do, by the way, right here, leave your stack trapped. In games like this where people are wild, making like a lot of mistakes, I really try to avoid doing that. I would have, if I if I were you, had tried attacking this like a two in Afghanistan. If you were to have done that, I mean, I don't think Black would have attacked you and you would have kept your stack open, at least more open for yourself. Yellow, by the way, makes a beautifully fast attack going into Australia, but they weaken themselves a lot. They I mean it attacks so much of green. It's gonna take them so many turns to recover. I don't know if it was worth it. It was definitely not worth it for red taking out the green AI bot for just one card, but a lot of new players don't know if someone's out, like you don't need to be attacking them. And now red, the bad neighbor, is now gone to your even worse neighbor. They are attacking everything and holy cow. I thought red was a novice player. They're eliminating black. Holy guacamole with a side of tortilla chips. That was holy Batman amazing. They just eliminated two players from the game. They're on 56 troops. And now they have an extremely strong guard. Like they're trying to be good neighbor with you and you're trying to get other players to attack red right here. We now get to, I think, another critical mistake like uh, of you, like uh, this game. And what you are doing is you decide to attack red. But if you notice this game, red has been very haphazard, not following standard principles of like a uh, diplomacy and good neighbor. And you just poke the bear of the bad neighbor. Like now look, you're, you're continuing to attack them. These attacks will be taking out just one extra troop, but you're giving yourself up like about four or five troops right here. You don't want to be poking a bear with someone who doesn't even realize that they're a bear that can bear their fangs and hit you. I apologize for the bad pun, people, but this was not a good move attacking Red. I would have rather given them the continent because maybe they would like hit you, but if you were just doing things like spamming them hearts, telling things would be okay, Maybe moving some territories into North Africa so they, they, that way they don't break you. They would have just done something else. Instead though, now they have a strong three point guard, but we get one of the best flipping plays of the game right here. Look at Orange opening up the yellow stack. That's a beautiful play right there because they're hoping that someone else attacks red instead. You're certainly not going to attack red. You've kind of just kind of given up and resigned yourself to your fate. But the yellow player, the weakest player, recognizes that if red owns North and South America, they're going to lose the game. So they decide to attack red very, very hard. If I were them, I would have waited because I think red would have attacked you because they just attacked their closest and bad neighbor first. But instead, yellow goes all out attacking. And now look at red. 
Red is just basically acting off of emotions, and now they're going into their tantrum phase. The anger, the hate, the vitriol coming from Red. All thrown in this one moment, and they're just going into yellow, self-destructing, and ending the yellow player's game. The orange player was a maestro, owning their continent, establishing good relations. They take out yellow right away. They don't care about smacking red. And now look at this. Like they did, by the way, make a little bit of a mistake, kind of leaving all those extra troops. Uh, right there, they could have attacked a bit more. But now look. They are attacking as much as possible around the map to weaken the red player. The balance of the game has been broken. They now have more troops than you and red combined. You can do two things at this point because again, the red player was just attacking so much and they just kind of ended the game for everybody. I would actually be giving the red player and letting them stay in the game, hoping that the red player has a set on three and chooses to attack orange is your only chance of potentially recovering. And worst case scenario, if you don't attack the or the the red player, orange will then eliminate red for the cards and then take you on second anyway. In this case, though, like you're trading in, you open up both stacks, and orange, while you have a slight lead in troops right now, they're gonna get the attacker's advantage on your troops and your army, and you're just not gonna be able to recover from it. But ugh, we are gonna see what happens, man. If I were to overall look at this game, I think you were just kind of poking like the bear a lot. And thankfully the bear did not like attack you. But when you have an angry neighbor bear, man, you just got to be very, very careful and hope that when they make a move, that it just, it doesn't end up like hurting you. In this case, Orange just stayed as far away from the bad neighbor the whole time. And they let the red the red player win the game for them. But with that, this is Olive XC signing off.